This is Isaiah Kiner Fluffa, and you're listening to the Texas Rangers Fanatic Podcast with Alex Plink. Rangers Nation, it's Alex Blink with uh, Dallas Sports Fanatic, and this is the Texas Rangers Fanatic Podcast, episode 34. I am welcomed by Mr. Levi Weaver. Levi, we are both wearing black today. I feel like it's a funeral because we're still in the lockout. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is kind of my everyday. I've sort of fallen into the Steve Jobs era of my life where I basically just wear like a black hoodie and a black t-shirt most days. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's sad. It's a sad week, man. Um, we we got some false hope on what was it Monday night that maybe maybe there would be baseball. There technically still is. There's minor league baseball. That's why I know. I'm here in so, Arizona. I mean, let's look at it on the bright side. Yeah, there's baseball happening. There's college baseball happening. College b ball mm-hmm. this past weekend with TCU in Nebraska. So there's stuff happening. I know folks are excited for the major leagues, but, you know, it's good to see the youngsters out, get a shot, hopefully on a national scale, get a little bit more exposure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of wonder if there's going to be minor league baseball on TV this year. Um, seems like an opportunity for ballet sports or somebody to send a camera crew out and, and uh, capitalize on that. But I don't know. I kind of, I kind of wonder if, I wonder how resilient the baseball fan is, you know, I mean, we had they're just angry at the sport, angry at the sport in general. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we had 2020 where this, the labor dispute, the baseball could have been the first sport back. They could have had the the nation's entire attention. Mm -hmm. Uh, That didn't happen. And then last year there was just more quibbling about COVID protocols and and last year was fine. Rangers fans specifically though, sat through a 102 loss season. And then this year, I, I wonder how many fans are, are going to make the extra effort to do things like watch Japanese league or Korean league or minor leagues or college or indie ball. And how many of them are just going to be like, you know what, sort it out and get back to me. If I feel like coming back, I'll come back. But in the meantime, I mean, the, the last time baseball had a, a labor stoppage, we barely even had the internet, mm. right? There, the options were still rather limited. Uh, now it's, it's not just basketball and hockey. There's, I it was know. too young for me to remember, so I'm not sure what the common 15 to 30 yep. year old person did during there. I mean, you can watch six hours of TikTok these days if you really want to, mm-hmm. or you can, I mean, just the the other sports that are, people care about F1 now, I guess. That's the thing that yeah, people are watching. Formula, yeah, Formula One is huge. Yep. Yeah, wrestling is like, I don't think in the mid 90s if i remember correctly i feel like wrestling was it kind of hit a lull like i'm talking about like wwf or wwe now i'm old enough to, to remember w- w- I, well i don't want to make any wrestling fans mad but i think wwf was the big back then in the mid 90s mm-hmm. if i can recall um and then transferred to well WWE. it was huge in the 80s right but i feel like in the 90s it sort of took a little bit of a lull and now it's back right People now i'm hearing aew that. is huge right now is sure why not? The point is, <laughs> people have options. Yes. They, yes. they can do other things now. And I think it's very short-sighted of baseball. Um, and, and specifically, I want to make it very clear that I'm talking about the owners here. And I, I do feel like this is a rare situation where there, there is a pretty clear uh, villain in this. I, I do believe that it's ownership. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think it's short-sighted to assume that fans are just going to come roaring right back um, when baseball comes back. And even if April is the the month where they generally see smaller crowds and people, you know, people care about opening day, but the crowds are smaller in April. Sure. But I think rather than just assume, well, those aren't really big numbers anyway, but they'll come back in May. Like they always have. I I don't think you can. I don't think so. I I think the damage it's going to linger at least for the first half. Maybe uh, if your if your team is in a big chase, come August and Mm -hmm. September, maybe you'll get big crowds. But think about this from a Rangers perspective. I mean, you got a four game series against the Yankees. That's as far as we know gone. I don't know if there's going to be any adjustments made. Well, yeah. Well, adjustments made to the schedule. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's what a hundred. I'm just 
throw out numbers off the top of my head, 150 to 160,000 fans yeah. total for that four game series that you lose revenue on. And sure, like the Northern cities with weather issues, you may save a little bit, but opening day is always filled up in any ballpark you go for the most yeah. point, unless, you know, Tampa, I mean, I, I haven't checked the Rays and Marlins numbers, but even those compared to what they usually get on a nightly yeah. basis. Yeah. I, I have a theory that I'm working on that uh, Globe Life Field broke baseball and opened a portal to hell because <laughs> I just, when I wrote that's it, that's where everything that two year, two of the three years it's open on opening day, there will be no fans. Right. And the one year that they did have opening day, the entire world was like, what are you doing? Exactly. Is, you should not. So, if you, so if you actually followed protocol, well, I don't want to say follow protocol, but if you followed the crowd, there would have been what, 50% capacity at the very least. So you oh. don't even have full crowd. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 50 being generous. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I did not, man, I knew that last home game at Globe Life Park. I always get these confused. That was very confusing. It's Choctaw, Choctaw Stadium. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Choctaw Stadium. Choctaw yes. Stadium. Uh, I knew sort of as that pageantry was happening and they were digging up home plate. I was like, end of an era. I'm really sad to see this go. But I was try, I tried to embrace, like, but you know, next year we're going to have air conditioning. It's going to be a really nice stadium. And you know, the state of the I, world's I can, like, really? Okay, you can yeah. have your air conditioning. Yeah. On the but, trade off. You know, here's a here's a pandemic. Uh followed, let's, you know, fingers crossed, hopefully not by World War Three. Like I, it's it's the it's the stadium that did it. It's, there was the stadium and then as soon as they got the Chris Stapleton concert stage together. Yep. That's yep. It's Chris all... Stapleton. He's partly to blame. Hashtag Crips blame Chris Stapleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, I'm in a great headspace, uh, Alex. I think you, you've got me on a good day here in surprise. <laughs> like, hey, how's things going in minor league camp? Well, we're in a globe like field, open a portal to hell. We're in a therapy session today. So I think, yeah. uh, let, what do they say? Let it all out. Let your emotions out. Let your feelings out. Well, we just, so, you know, The Athletic was acquired by the New York Times. Um, and that's my big off-season news is that technically employed by the New York Times now. Uh, but we just got our employee, um, uh, you know, basically rules, like here's how to be a professional. So I will not be letting my emotions out today because yeah. I have a new behavior policy to adhere to. Okay. Um, and we don't want to hear my real thoughts on the lockout <laughs> because we want me to stay employed. <laughs> yes, we do. 100%. I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble for you. Yeah. I'll it's tell I'll, I'll tell you what, it's too bad. Your hotel room isn't like soundproof or go to like a soundproof and just one of those, <laughs> there's one, of those ther- one of those therapy closets that they put you in where there's just yeah. nothing in there and then just scream and yell and I, everything out. I'm frail. I would hurt myself. I, you know, I gotta, I, maybe I could go do axe throwing. Surely, surely there's axe throwing in Arizona. Get like one of those rock'em sock'em punching gloves. The ones that don't hurt yeah. when you do. Yeah, I, I did buy. I got a couple of those. I got a couple of those. Yeah. Closet, yeah. Yeah. I, I oh, they come in handy. Over the off season. They, they come in handy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice. You just sort of go out and wall up on the punching bag for a little while and feel much better afterwards. A little be- more productive uh, than doing other endorphin stuff. rush. Oh yeah, for sure, one hundred percent for sure. Oh, so we are in therapy. You were you weren't joking. See, I told you, <laughs> indirectly, indirectly, therapy. Yeah, that's even a thing. Uh, I for a moment forgot that people are going to be listening to this. So let's 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 talk about baseball. Uh, what what do you what do you want to know? Well, since you are in minor league camp, what's yeah. uh, what's your taking the first few days who has 
I know it's only been a few days, but who's impressed you the most? So they're not really doing scrimmages right now. It's a lot of batting practice. There are some bullpens happening, but it's really just like infield drills. So Mm -hmm. it's hard for me to watch um, and say I'm impressed by anybody because, you know, wow, good job going first to third at 85%. But I will say, like, I've I've been impressed by the level of, it's, it's been more like the front office and the coaches. Yeah. And you've got big league staff that's here that they, they've really tried to take this opportunity to make a silver lining um, out of a, a bad situation. And so you've got actual, you know, the hitting coaches, uh, the new hires uh, at, at the big league level of, of um, let's see, Tim Hire and uh, now I'm drawing a blank. The, the guy, we, we talked to him. Donnie, Donnie Ecker. Donnie Corey. Ecker. Uh, yeah. So uh, Donnie and Tim have been in camp and they're working with guys from like rookie ball and, and they're working with the, you know, Cody Atkinson, the, the hitting coordinator, they're working with him and they, these guys all know each other um, from before. And so there's like a unified message and it's the same message guys are getting in rookie ball and low A, and high A, double A, triple A, all the way to the big league level. They're communicating in the same way. It is a unified message throughout the entire organization. And the same is happening on the pitching side as well. So um, I've been really impressed by the, the way that the Rangers front office and coaching staff have sort of kind of rolled with the punches. And it sucks that they can't be in touch with their guys from the 40-man roster. But they've still been doing work. They've still been sort of organizing and making sure that they are um, as efficient as possible during camp. So I guess if I've been impressed by anybody, that's probably where I would start. Um, that's a perfect opportunity, then, a perfect opportunity for those guys yes. to go one on one to see, because I would imagine that you don't get that opportunity even in because you're so focused on the 40 man guys, making sure that they're ready to go. So right. the fact that you get up front, personal, close with a lot of these youngsters, a lot of these rookies, a lot of these guys that are going to start in single A, even double A, you get that chance to kind of go one on one with them. Yeah. And it's not like those opportunities didn't exist before, you know, you would have an, a normal, which we haven't really had normal since the middle of normal spring training. training. What is that? But, yeah. Um, but in a normal spring training, you would still have the big league camp going in the mornings and then the big leaguers would leave and the, and some of the, the big league coaches would still stick around and do work with the minor league guys on the minor league side of camp. But by that point, you've already done an entire day of workouts um, or you're getting back some days you have a game and you, You know, you go to the road game and you just go home from there or if there's a home game and maybe you pop out to the backfield and talk to a guy for 10 minutes, but they're tired. They've they've been at the ballpark since six in the morning. So, um, yeah, it's the the direct one on one um, work that that they're able to do with these guys, I think, hopefully will be beneficial um, to to all these minor leaguers as they prepare for their season. Who's uh, who's one of the minor league guys you're excited to see? Uh, there are a few. In fact, I made a list. I don't know if I've got where's my where's my notepad here. Uh, I I put this out on. Yeah, I don't know where it is. It's laying around here somewhere. I'm very disorganized. Uh, boy, I, I, put, I tweeted put the last spot. night. Yeah, like are there people who you know? I have my list of guys I want to talk to, but what about you, the readers? Like, who would you look, like me to talk to? And I got a list of about thirty guys that were mentioned uh, by people on twitter and i'm not going to get all 30 of those guys um it's just not from a logistic standpoint not possible to do because um i told you this before we, we started recording like they'll go out and work out and then there's a middle bit where they're kind of in between that i can sometimes catch them and yeah. they'll finish their workouts and then i catch them going as they're coming off um, so i can get two or three guys a day but and i'm only here for a, I, I, like five work days so it's it won't be all of them um but the, it is interesting to see where where I'm going with this is it's interesting to see the names that come up when you ask that question to to fans because Rangers system is deeper than it used to be it's not just Mm -hmm. the same four names and yeah everybody wants to read about Jack Leiter and you know before his shoulder was injured Josh Young and but you've also got you know let me off the top of my head Justin Foscue hey what's going on with Evan Carter he was kind of an unknown pick hey Aaron Zavala how how are things going with him uh there's a 
there's a slew of pitchers that are in the system that are you know not just lighter and win but what's going on with cole reagan's where's yuri rodriguez where's uh what's larson kendrick what's going on with him uh so it's i talked to tk roby today and i these are just the names that are coming up off the top of my head they're legitimately if i had the time i could talk to 30 pitchers who would probably have be in, be of interest um if not you know capital p prospects so there's it's there's a lot of a lot of guys in camp um tomorrow we're talking to luis angel is it pronounced luis angel i will figure this out tomorrow uh, acuna ronald acuna's okay. brother maximo acosta what a cool name we're gonna get stuck to him tomorrow um <laughs> so yeah it's it's in, i think for me it's there are individual players. I talked to Blaine Krim today. He's an interesting story to me. Um, I don't want to give spoilers for my own story, but that's coming soon. Um, but I think part of it is just the broad scope of minor leaguers that are interesting guys that, that are worth talking to here. And I, I do wish that there was something more resembling clubhouse access um, just so I could knock out you know 10 or 12 guys in a day. And then I'd have minor league content for the next two months so uh, so yeah i mean i am excited to talk to a lot of these guys each one has an interesting story too so i think that that's the that's the hard part is that trying to determine who's over who who's more essential than others and yeah i mean ranger right. fans are so well informed of the minor league system that it's true. It, like you said you get about 30 names and you would be about 10 years ago looking at minor leaguers yeah. and you're looking at maybe three or four and then those are your main guys so yeah now everybody everybody is so oh, well informed on the system there are almost certainly going to be people who listen to this that are like why didn't he mention dustin harris you know why didn't he mention owen white why didn't he mention josh smith well because i wrote about those guys recently already <laughs> but they are at the top of the list of people that yeah. should be you know, it, it, of interest to the fans. So, what do you foresee happening as far as the big league club goes once, whenever, whenever uh, lockout ends? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I I think it could go. I wrote this recently. There's there's a Mitch Hedberg joke where he says, uh, "I used to be in a band, and people either loved us or hated us, or thought we were just okay." <laughs> And I think there are three paths forward for the Rangers. Once this all comes uh, back, they, they could continue to really push and go for it and go sign a couple of good starting pitchers. And beyond signing starting pitchers, maybe they use some of this minor league depth to trade for some guys that they think will be a part of their rotation for the next four or five years. They could really make a push it, with expanded playoffs. You know, if they're yes. going to be, if there are going to be 14 teams, for sure. If there's going to be 12 teams, maybe even still, that might be within reach. So they could really continue to push and get the gas pedal down and make the most of these Marcus Simeon years before he gets to be too old, you know. Um, they could also just go, no, we've done what we need to do. We knocked it all out before everything came to a standstill. We're, you know, we, they, they do need at least one more starting pitcher, but, you know, we'll just sign a guy and wait for the rest of these uh, prospects to be big league ready. Or maybe there's some middle ground where they go, yeah, we have a lot of moves to make, but they're not going to be major impact moves so much as they are going to be just sort of shuffling to try to arrange, you know, maybe we've got too many middle infield prospects. We need more outfielders. Let's, let's work on that. Um, as to which one they'll do, it'd be a whole lot more exciting if they just really put the pedal down and go for it. Um, but I think it's more important that they look at the long-term health of the roster because I do think they've got a shot to be very good in 2023, 24, as some of these guys start to really hit the big leagues. Um, at the same time, it's prospects. You can't count on that until they, until they arrive. So, um, yeah, it'll be an interesting thing once it happens. It's sure going to happen quick uh, because they're Curious. almost indubitably going to have a short spring training of maybe three to four weeks tops. And so it, it'll all be happening at the same time. You know, everybody showing up to camp, reporting to camp, trying to get 
ready for a season. Meanwhile, the front office is just like on the phone with guys they've not been allowed to talk to for two months, uh, three months. Jeez. It's going to be chaos. It's, oh. it has, it's pretty much three months to the point right now. You're looking yeah. at. I'm curious. Yeah, it's going to be chaotic. I'm curious about, like you said, as far as prospects go, if you could use that as leverage, come trade deadline. I'm, I'm curious to see what route this team does as far as trade deadline goes. Do you use that and maybe gain guys that you have another year of control over with other teams? Or do you rely on your prospects and maybe try to make a young push? Yeah, I think a lot of that will be determined by the direction of the team on the field. You know, if they go out and surprise everybody and they're good, uh, not that it would be a surprise that they'd be better than they were. I think that oh, is yeah. hopefully hopefully a given. Uh, but if they if they go out and they're in position to be, you know, maybe get into the playoffs, um, John Daniels has a pretty long track record of, hey, if we're, if we're close, sure, let's pull yeah. the trigger. Let's make a deal. Let's go get Carlos Beltran. Let's go in 2015 when they were expected to be sellers, but they kind of made a surge at the deadline like let's go get Cole Hamels because he'll help us this year but he'll also help us next year so I think you know it's not Daniel's calling the shots by himself you've got Chris Young to to contend with as well but I a a young GM or a new GM I would not at all be surprised to see him go yeah I'm excited let's go for it you know so he hasn't been around long enough to be cynical yet and um, so but if they're not that's where it gets interesting is like how do they deal with there's not a whole lot of pieces left to sell, right? If you, if you want to call them sellers this year, who Willie Calhoun, Yeah. you know, like who's the, who's the, who do they sell? They're not going to trade semi and not this early into the contract. No, no low? maybe. I mean, if he has Adolis Garcia a, is the obvious answer. True. True. But no, that's that's interesting. I was I was thinking in my head a joke because you said cynical. I was like, how do you spell cynical? Where are the first two letters? Oh, uh, there we go. There you go. Yeah, very good. That's I, I I see you. Good job. That's I feel I feel like that's a I don't know I feel like that's a Levi joke. I don't know. No, you beat me to it. It's all yours. You, you can have it. I, <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just had to. That was the first I mean, thing that popped into my mind. I make no claims to it. <laughs> but uh, no, that that is a really good point. On who do you, if you go and maybe sell someone big, who exactly do you go to? And if Adolis Garcia pulls up similar numbers that he did last year, you may be right. able to get a big overhaul for him with another team who is contending this year, depending on where you are in the standings too. If things right, aren't going right. too well, but he's having a breakout year or not breakout. Well, but- talk about being, talk about being cynical. I'll, I'll, I'll put that hat on for a minute. He struggled at the end of last year. He did. So yeah. if he's your, if he is your, if, if we're sellers, he's our trade chip. There's, there's a possibility that the league figured out Adolis Garcia and yeah. that was a flash in the pan thing. And now they figured it out and he's, back to being old Adolis Garcia. So he, that's not a guarantee that he's going to be a valuable trade piece. You know, I hope he is. He's a super likable guy. Uh, he's a great story. You, you pull for the underdogs that stick with it and, and overcome adversity, but he's going to have to prove it this year before I'll, I'll be a full, um, you know, before my analytical mind will, will be a believer. I'm curious to see his, him pinpointing at right field all season, how that would dictate instead of having to shift from center, right, center, right. Well, okay. So let's look at the, at the outfield alignment right now. You've got a you've got Leo de Taveras, you got the Coles, Willie and or the, the Calhouns. The William Calhouns. Cole. Yes. The, the Calhouns. Um, Which you can make a sitcom I, out of that, but I, we'll save that for yeah. the time. Yeah, is Leody Tavares ready to be a big leaguer on opening day? Whenever that, well, it won't it, it won't be opening day, but you know the first. I'm not call, I'm not calling it opening day, by the way. Yeah, I'm I I caught myself. Um, 
is he ready by then? Because if he's not, Garcia is you bring somebody, center fielder. Or do you bring somebody in that can play center field? I have to look at who's available, but yeah. I don't know. I like Garcia. I threw out Lewis Brinson, but... Okay, that's... all right. Homecoming there. Someone who didn't have a that great, be an interesting a, a great few years with Miami, maybe to try to rejuvenate his career. Now I picked okay. it on the basis of losing a draft pick because Brinson was DFA'd. Now, if the new it, CBA dictates any change, who knows? So you wouldn't lose a draft pick, right? Because he was they didn't offer him a QO. So right, that's what I was saying. Is that Brinson compared to other guys? Oh, right, right, right. They okay, gotcha, gotcha. But if that gotcha. all changes yeah. with the new CBA, then you have other options that you could go with. Yeah, that isn't. I don't even know what center fielders are. My so what I thought was Seiya Suzuki is is the the big yeah. name, right? Yeah. Put him in right field, Garcia in center field. Let one of the Calhouns play left, the other play DH, and give Tavares some more time and in triple a until he proves like okay no i'm ready this time and at that point do you trade garcia because he's 32 years old even if you're winning somebody it depends on what others are willing to offer for that yeah or you trade i mean i hate to say this about cole calhoun before he even plays one game for the rangers but he's probably expendable someone similar to like a season Todd Frazier like sure sure yeah or or Hunter Pence but Pence proved himself to be more I guess valuable in the clubhouse they decided not to trade him um I still think they should have as much as I, I enjoyed having him around I, I I think in retrospect probably would have traded him um so yeah and if they if they don't get Suzuki I do they go for Castellanos like it all depends on how big an impact they want to make before the season starts, because if they want to sign Suzuki, then they really are started. They're, they're kind of getting into that range of like, well, we can kind of go for it. Probably not a world series win, but we could be good this year. And if they don't get him, Castellanos probably represents that same level of, of going for it in this. Um, but either one of those moves probably pushes a Dolly Garcia to center field. And, and pushes Tavares back and says, come, you know, when you're ready. When you're ready. But we're not going to make the same mistake we made last year where he came up and. Yeah. Just wasn't effective. For like, right. I mean, yeah. Although had it had a better impact at the end of the year still. Sure. Sure. And he might be ready. But yeah. we, we won't know until we. Until get spring, spring training spring actually training. happens. Uh, we're supposed to be learning that right now. We are supposed to be right. Let's see. It is March 3rd as we record this. We should be th- almost three weeks into pestering Chris Woodward with questions about whether Leody Tavares is ready to play center field. I continue to throw my phone across the room because I keep getting memories on spring training posts from last year, from two years ago, from three years ago. And I'm like, just man can i just tell you it is so weird being out here right now like it is there's no fans um allowed so it's empty the there's no big leaguers there's no games it's just the minor league workouts and it's not even scrimmages and it's like you're seeing chris woodward is there today and tony beasley was there today and you know it's doug mathis is there you're you're seeing front office guys john daniels was here yesterday it's not ross finster maker today. like it's the big league infrastructure but it's just it's it's i don't want to say sad because it's good that these kids are getting an opportunity to get work in with the big league staff but as far as like what spring training is supposed to feel like it's sad because it's the it's the the lockout is just looming over all of it you know this is not what it's supposed to be no no. And you're just, everybody's trying to make the best of it. For some of these guys, it's a great opportunity, but it's just sad. It is sad to me that. <sighs> that because you know, the reason it's just, for this. it just leaves you a bad taste. It yes. leaves you a bad taste in your mouth. Right. Because you're realizing, well, why is this happening? Right. Like Avarice. That's why it's mm-hmm. not, you know, when there was a pandemic and you're like, okay, well, I get it. We want to be responsible. This is, this sucks. 
but it wasn't sad to me. It was just annoying. This, yeah. this is just, it's sad because it was avoidable. Exactly. There's no reason that this should be happening. And uh, yeah, it's, I, I completely sympathize with fans who are just fed up. And I, what I hope is that baseball comes back and the beauty of the game, because the game is still the game. It is yeah. still a beautiful game. And watching the people play it who are the best in the world at playing it, there's, there is nothing like it. No. And so I hope that that is enough to draw fans back. Um, but yeah, it's been difficult for me to sort of work up the gumption to go hang out at the complex and do interviews because I'm like, yes, it's great to get a chance to talk to these guys. We don't normally get to talk to minor leaguers during minor league camp, but it's just sad. I'm just sad. Can I say sad a few more times? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can say sad. it as many as I might have a sad counter <laughs> by the end of this. The, I've I've been thinking Good. about this. <laughs> I don't know. I might actually. Um, it, when it, and I flash back to 2020, and one of the questions that I've always thought about is like thinking about how chaotic it was, and just did we did you think that it was going to get this ugly when you thought about how hard it was to for both sides to even come to a conclusion for the 2020 season. Did you think that it was, I think a lot of us thought it was going to be ugly, but did you think it was going to get this ugly? Uh, um, I, I always thought this was going to be pretty ugly. Yeah. Um, I did hold out hope that there were, that, that, you hope that people will be smart. You know, I understand needing to, uh, I, so I do understand the players side of, look, we took a bath the last two CBAs. And if we can, with the hope and the understanding like, well, okay, for now, but the league will come around. They, you know, they, this will be okay. And then the league didn't, they just kept that ground and continued to, push forward and so i understand the players need 100 to a to reestablish like stop walking all over us we see the number for you know revenue go like this and we see the number for player payroll go like this all we're asking is for something you know let the two numbers move together um i so i understand that what i had hoped is that I, I, I hate to be this guy, but I put this at the feet of the commissioner because I, I understand that billionaires are generally not the most in touch with reality people. They're good at one thing, and that good thing is winning when it comes to finances. Like they are good at finding a way to make profits. And, and in a lot of a lot of industries, if you come from the oil industry, for instance, and your workers decide to get upset at you, okay, you can leave. I'll bring in somebody else. Uh, they, this is not the same thing. No. And so, so you don't expect, it. I saw something last night that talked about a study that said that having power actually does cause something in the human brain to be less empathetic. If you have power over somebody, you are less empathetic. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so when you have, when you are the owner of the baseball team, I don't, I don't want to paint somebody in a light just because I don't connect with them and it's easy for me to make them a villain. It is just gener- generally, I'm trying to say genuinely and generally at the same time, it is just generally uh, difficult to stay sympathetic or empathetic when you have that much power that is where it is the job of the commissioner of baseball to look out for the best interests of the owners are looking out for the best interest of their profits right that's what they do that is how they got to the position that they're in that's why they're in the position that they're in they bought a baseball team because it's a good investment it is the job of the commissioner to say for the health of the game You have to set aside your desire to crush your opposition or to crush your employees or to crush whoever opposes you. We have to, for the sake of the game, you do not understand how the fans are going to react to this. 
You do not understand how much of a blowback there is going to be. And long-term, you are cutting off your nose despite your face. You are going to kill all these profits that you care about long-term are going to go away because you are alienating your fan base. It is the job of the commissioner to get people in a room and understand that. And he's failed to do that. Yeah. And so I, I understand that he's in a tough position because these are the people that hired him and he works for them. He, but based on action, it's not helping his cause. Yeah. I mean, it's just right. Based on actions. It, you it feels like consensus. he's the 31st owner. It's just another yeah. owner. Yeah, there, there has not, I have not seen anything from him that suggests to me that he views all of the parts of this equation as equally important parts of this equation. He still seems to, and I understand he is hired by people who see this as labor versus management. And this is not the same. Because if this were a fair market, and, and they did not have their antitrust exemption. If you upset the players, they go, okay, well, we'll just go play in this other league. But they have an antitrust exemption. Yeah. It's, a, it's a legal monopoly. We are, as a society, seeing why it's not a good idea to have monopolies. <laughs> because when there's a monopoly, <laughs> ownership can go, where else are you going to go? <laughs> yeah. Nowhere. So you'll take it and you'll like it. Um, so, yeah, it, but the job of a commissioner of a sport is to tend to the health of that sport. And he has not done that effectively. I'm not saying he's not trying, but he has to be a stronger voice in the room with the owners and explain to them what is going on. Explain to them that they are cutting off their own face here. And he hasn't done it. To somewhat mediate. Right. Because I know that word's been thrown out a whole bunch, but yeah, I mean, that's... The I mean, only way probably a better changes, way. Go ahead. Go ahead. The, the, I, I think the only way that this changes is if his salary is half paid for by the Players Association and half paid for by the owners. Because right now he's hired by the owners. Exactly. So, so who, uh, who else would he defend? Right. And, I mean, you know, if you're hired by the owners, you're going to basically do what the owners are. You're basically a puppet. They're your bosses. Yeah. And so you take the blow from the public. So the public and is rightly so. Look, he's one hundred percent public yeah. speaker. No, no, no. When you when you come out and announce that you're canceling regular season game, you're canceling opening day. And laugh and like this. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I mean, that's you know, what do you what do that's you think absurd. people are going to be? Yeah, no, hundred percent. And it, it's and a he's slap condescending the... when he speaks to the press. Yeah. So the, who, the people who are telling these stories that are that it's players on their social media and it's me and it's. It's me and you, and it's people writing these stories like, here's what I see. Here are the facts that I see. I'm trying to be fair about it, but here's what I see. And he's condescending to both of those parties while representing the ownership's interests. That's, that's not going to go well. It is insulting. And the narrative's not going to go in your direction. Like, you've got to understand how you're going to be perceived. And he just does not appear to have any understanding whatsoever of how he is perceived. It's a bad combination. 100%. So I guess I did talk about how I felt after all. See, that's what happens during therapy sessions. <laughs> In one way, one way or the other, the feelings come out. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, I guess. I guess one thing is, and this is something that may come out as a dumb question, but this is why I'm asking because I'm afraid of dumb questions. If there was no lockout. Because I know, of course, if you lift the lockout right now, you've got player strike that's likely going to happen. Right. Right. If there was no lockout, like if they just didn't initiate a lockout and they would just be still negotiating, but still under the old CBA, do you feel like a strike would have happened? Like we'd be having spring training right now, technically under the old CBA. We probably wouldn't even know how ugly the negotiations are. Yeah, we're also, we'd be focused on spring training. Do you yeah, think the that's a good would question. eventually strike? Well, at some point, yeah. I don't know if it, I don't know if it would have happened already, um, because the players do seem to be eager to play, right. and if they thought that negotiations were going, were making progress, then sure, keep playing, but. But maybe if the owners had pulled some of the 
things that they pulled during these negotiations. Uh, maybe, you know, I mean, for the owners to say when the lockout started, it's, you know, urgent for us to, we're going to get trying get right to work and get this resolved. Urgency then, means 43 days. I'm going to, I'm going to use that yeah. from now on. If I'm like, Oh, I'll be urgent with this request you gave me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll and when, 43 days later. So yeah, maybe uh, there may have been a lockout by now. I think probably more likely they would have let it get into the season and let the season get started yeah. so that it was more impactful. Um, but honestly, the owners probably shot themselves in the foot by doing a lockout because now public sentiment is you're the ones that did this right um the players have the ability to whether they would have gone on strike or not they do have the ability to say we would we'd be playing yeah nobody nobody's calling their bluff on that so their messaging is easy yeah we want to play get it together we have to get this right so that we can play but you lock this out you're the one is, that's responsible for the stoppage. The reason we're not at spring training is because you won't allow us to be at spring training. I think the owners shot themselves in the foot by doing that. Mm. Mm. To think opening day would be uh, four weeks from now. Yeah. We would have, we would have, uh, I don't know if we would be happy or not. Well, right now we would be happy regardless of an outcome of opening day against the Yankees. But uh, I think, if there was no lockout, we would have had a uh, opening day interviewing Chris Woodward on his thoughts, for the team's first game. That's depressing. Sorry. That's depressing. You, you froze for just a minute. Sorry, it's not reliable. Although that's Sorry. fine. You're, froze, you're frozen too with the best look ever. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. That's awesome. Oh, man. I think we may have to edit some of this out. <laughs> no, I like that look. Am I back? I really, I really do. Oh, great. It's, it's beautiful. Great. <laughs> oh, no. Well, since we are wrapping up on our oh, therapy man. session, did you have anything else you wanted to get off your chest? Or has your chest um, pretty much. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. I got one. Um, that if you are in Arizona, if if there is a spring training this year and you happen to make a trip out here, you got to go to Eric's Family Barbecue. I we went there last night and um, it was exceptional. Ooh. Very good barbecue, even here in Arizona. I know I'm from Texas. That is perhaps blasphemy to say, but it's really, really good. You'd be surprised in some off. of the places... You'd be surprised at some of the places, like you find pizza places in areas you wouldn't think. Uh, you find, well, I mean, you find like Italian in places you wouldn't think. So there's always that one diamond in the rough in a city. Yep. This is the, it's way out in the middle of nowhere. You'll think you're lost and you come up on it and that's the place. It's good. Is it in the desert eyes where you see like the ruins and all of that stuff? It's not quite that far out. It's, Stereo, uh, it's just stereotypical south, south desert. Five minutes. So it's a little bit of a hike, but it's worth it. Oh, it's you what? Said I said, oh, you said hike, so never mind. Oh, yeah. I don't hike. Sorry about this, Internet. This is, this is killing me. I feel like I'm getting the first and last thirds of your sentence, but there's like a middle part that's just cut out. So uh, <laughs> I apologize if I have answered, like given an inappropriate to like answer the question you didn't ask. Sorry if that's what I'm trying to piece it together. Answer the beginning and the end. I feel like that's how the negotiations have gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will not be increasing my offer on the collective bargaining tax. No. Or, no. Yeah. Neither will I. Wait, CBT. What does CBT stand for? Is it collectively? No, it's uh, competitive balance tax. There we go. Gosh, it's been a long week, man. No, I hear you. I hear you. And just waiting for that news to hit. That like meetings are happening. Okay. At this point, meetings happen. Okay. Just let me know when it's when it's all good. Cause I feel like Monday yep. was the biggest dead part of my language, but it was the biggest cock tease. It was terrible, man. And I like I had a flight booked for the next day, the next morning at like 745. And I'm up at midnight trying to figure out if I'm gonna catch my flight or not, because 
if there's a deal, I don't want to fly out here and then fly home just as the players are getting here. I'm going to have to cancel my flight. But if there's not a deal, then I'll come out and have a minor league camp. And they, like the worst possible option was, there might be a deal, stay tuned. <laughs> I had to reschedule my flight, reschedule my rental car, reschedule my hotel. It's a big mess. And then, and then they were like, yeah, no deal. Go to my Who the hell camp. sleeps? Who the hell sleeps the night before the flight? Uh, yeah, me. I'm old, man. Uh, I used to well, you said that's the exact same flight, thing. No matter what. And, uh, that, was your exa- that was your exact answer because I just asked the same question. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you got the, the same answer. answer. <laughs> that's, that's at least inconsistent. Um, yeah, I got to sleep now. I hit 40 and I got to like go to bed at a reasonable hour. And or if I don't, I need a nap the next day. It sucks. I don't like this. Now you make me worry. That's all. Although I still have a decade Just left. Just to get one I last therapy session thing out. <laughs> you made yeah, me a little bit. Although you're fine. I, I got a decade left, so we're good. Yeah. No, you're good. I still, I still have my 30s to freak out about. Dude, enjoy your 30s. The 30s are great. Are they? And I'm sure a 50 year old, I'm sure that a 50 year old would probably tell me, dude, enjoy your 40s. Your 40s are great. I think that's probably just how this is going to go. And then 60s, 50s, 70s, 60s, we're we're going through the entire way. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Every time it's like 30 years old, my, my grandmother, rest her soul, when she was like a hundred, she's like, oh, I remember when I was 30 and, you know, it's just, just like the sweetest thing. And Mm -hmm. it made me feel better. Yeah, no, I, 30 was a good year for me. Um, where was I at 30? I was living in Nashville, was touring around, playing shows. Oh, my gosh. That was, that was the year the Rangers went to the World Series for the first time. So I started my uh, alternate Twitter account, the 3 2 account, because my music people were sick of hearing me tweet about baseball. And so I started a second account so I could tweet about baseball. And that means I was... 30 when I started that account and it also means that I've had it for 12 years now and uh that's very depressing so I need to go think about my life we've, got, <laughs> we've gone through the entire range of emotions yes we have <laughs> yes we have and with that um if you want to follow Levi on Twitter although probably everybody's listening already does but in case you're not three two Ephus uh also check out stuff on the athletic which is now new york times well still under athletic but it's yeah it's still the york times a little yeah little hint right there uh if you want to follow me on twitter a plink tx instagram a plink tex rangers coverage dallasportsmanag.com slash texas dash rangers uh i want to say I, I, I just don't know what else to say as far as just let's get this let's get this shindig on the road. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I, I am sorry if I have been like defeated, Levi, on this. I'm, I usually have something that I'm excited about or like more uh, rah rah, and I just I'm just annoyed. I'm annoyed by all of it, and I hope that they get it resolved quickly. It's weird because you know that it's going like eventually, it's going to happen, but then that's like saying eventually you're going to reach some sort of million dollars in, you know, say you've accumulated a million dollars at work. It's like, yeah. when, when, when is that going to happen? And there's just well, no way think, that. Right. And the longer this goes, I think the more they begin to hemorrhage even lifelong fans who find <laughs> other things to do. And we have, we, that, I don't know. We may, we may be jumping into something too big and near the end of the of the podcast, but like that's something I, I didn't even bring up earlier. Is that like it's not just like this is happening in normal times. Everybody's life has been upended for the last two and a half years. Oh, Everybody's course. life has has changed in a massive way. Habits have changed. People have you know learned new. I remember when this started. I told Heather, my wife. Uh, I was like, there's going to be a lot of babies born as a result of this. And there's going to be a lot of divorces as a result of this, because everybody's life has just the dynamics of day-to-day life have changed. And in those situations, that's when major life habits 
also change. So if people got out of the habit of watching baseball in 2020 because they couldn't get it together and play a longer season than 60 games, then I suspect we probably did see a decline in viewership last year. And if they're going to pull this at the end of two years of people already starting to change their habits, it, the longer this goes, the worse it is for the long-term health of the sport. And I do, I really wonder how many people are, are going to just be done. Cause I still, I still hear people, I have relatives that are not baseball fans like, oh yeah, well, that, when, that, when they went on strike in 1994, I was done and they never came back. Yeah. And I know a lot of fans did come back, but there are some that didn't. And there are going to be some that don't from this. No, 100%. And like you said, with so many choices that you have, whether it's in media, whether it's media or whether it's just stuff you do outside. And, you know, and nowadays there's just so much. And well, Viewership probably was down last year for a number of reasons in certain markets, but. Oh, well, yeah, a... you've also got ballet sports making it impossible to watch games on TV. Exactly. So there's this throw, throw that in on top of everything else. You, yeah. Gosh, I, I almost completely forgot about that. You've got a shortened season with labor strife. You've got a 2021 season where fans, and this is Ranger specific, but they were not the only ones that had difficulty with ballet sports, making it impossible like, to watch the sport. 12 and now there's not a sport. Teams. And there's like 12 or 13 teams that were affected. Unbelievable. Last three, well, yeah, about two years ago. I, I, it's funny because this would be my fourth season, 2022. And I was you got be one like, regular season. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, is this normal? Is this normality? I mean, even on our beat, you got Chris Halleck who started in 2020. I feel... You got Kennedy Landry who started last year. They've never seen a normal baseball a, season. A At what point does this end become end. a new normal? Yeah. Uh, I hate this. I just want baseball to be back. And with that note, Levi. <laughs> Appreciate it. I think we just ended. I think we just ended with we just want baseball back. I think that's we just want baseball back. That's it. Yep. I went it it, even going on Friday to Globe Life Field for TCU Nebraska. Like it, there was some sort of normality because it was nice to see cheering, nice to see just baseball being played, but it still just felt Mm -hmm. felt weird, felt odd. Yeah. This is not what you're accustomed to. I know. I, I wonder if college baseball will um, benefit from this. Like you'll get more people that actually start watching college ball and falling in love with that sport. And maybe it sort of jumps up in the ranks to be closer to how basketball and football are. Because this definitely lags behind those two. In, oh, 100%. 100%. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's an unintended silver lining that we see here. Maybe people actually start watching college baseball again or for the first time. If they'll put it, put it on TV, then yeah. Or I think it's, well, it is, I think, streamable on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah. I believe. I may be wrong on that. Or maybe certain games. Maybe the power conferences I'm thinking of. Yeah. All right. Well, we've definitely uh, sort of rolled to a stop here on this. Haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Levi, appreciate the time. Yeah, Let's I'm happy to do it. it. And let's get baseball back. Seriously. All right. Take care, man.